Okay, so now we are on the gutted practice for unit nine, day four. Okay, so number one, there's 19 students in a high school geometry class. The students are tasked to form a group of three students that love eating Cheetos more than anyone else. The group, which we're going to call the Cheeto Amigos, are not to be trifled with when it comes to their Cheetos. How many different groups can be formed? Okay, so a couple of things to note here. Remember, we have to determine, is this a combination or a permutation? So it just says they are forming a group. So does order matter here? No, order does not matter. Okay, another thing, if, there want, if they want three students in the group, can one student hold two spots? No. So this is without replacement. So if order does not matter, and we're doing this without replacement, that means this is a combination. So let's see, we know it's a combination then. That means we need to get in how many we can pick from. Well, it says there's 19 students. So this 19 right here is our N. And then the R, that's how many we're actually picking. We're actually picking three, so R is three. So at this point, we can use our calculator, NCR 19, comma, 3. So menu, probability, combination, menu 5, 3. We need to do 19, comma, 3. Gonna give us 969 groups. 969. I could say different groups, but the whole point of this problem is finding out the number of different groups. There's 969 different groups that can be formed. Okay, there's number one. Number two. Which state has the most rearrangements? Nebraska or Colorado? Well, let's look at Nebraska first. So on each of these, we've got to look for repeated letters. So there's how many total letters first are in Nebraska? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So n is equal to eight. Do I have any repeats? N doesn't repeat, no E, no B, no R. I just have an A. So A repeats twice. Okay, so to get the total, we have to do eight factorial divided by two factorial. So eight, menu five, one, eight factorial, divided by two factorial. It's 20,160. So that's how many ways we could rearrange Nebraska. Okay, now let's look at Colorado. How many letters are in Colorado? 
One, two, three, four, five, six. There's eight in Colorado. Do I have any repeats? C, no. O, yes, there's three O's. L, no, R, no, A, no, D, O. Okay, so there's just three O's. That's my only repeat. So do eight factorial divided by three factorial. So eight factorial divided by three factorial. That gets us 6,720. So which one has more? Nebraska clearly has more. So that's what we'll say here. Nebraska has more. That'll be our answer. Okay, number three. This one is like a problem we saw in yesterday's assignment. How many lines are determined by eight randomly selected points where no three of which are collinear? So let's think about this. How many points make a line? Two. Two points make a line. Does it matter the order? No. Order does not matter. Can I pick the same point twice? No. So this is without replacement. So order doesn't matter and we do it without replacement. This is a combination. Okay, so now we gotta figure out how many are we picking from? We're picking from eight. So n is equal to eight. How many do we need to make a line? We only need two. So a is our n, two is the r. So we can do ncr eight comma two. So menu, five, three, and then do eight comma two. It's gonna give us 28. So that means we can make 28 lines. Okay, there's number three. Number four, a point is chosen randomly on WZ. So let's stop there for a second. We choose a point on WZ. How far is it from W to Z? Two plus five plus three. That means the whole thing is equal to 10. Find the probability of picking a point not on XY. So I don't want this piece right there. I can have WX, I can have YZ, I can't have in between. So remember, probability is part divided by whole. The part we want is the two plus three. The whole is 10. 
So that'd be five over 10, which as a fraction is one half. We could stop there, but remember, you need to still know that one half is 0.5 as a decimal or 50%. Okay, so there's number four. For five and six, we're dealing with a spinner. How many degrees are in a full circle? 360. They asked the probability of landing on orange or blue. Orange or blue. So that probability would be 45 plus 90 divided by 360, which is 135 over 360. If we put that as a reduced fraction, we get three over eight. So again, you can stop with three over eight, but you need to know how to put that as a decimal. So that's gonna be 0.375, or as a percent, that's gonna be 37.5%. Again, for the sake of the homework, you can stop at three eighths. If this were like a test, it may give it to you as a decimal or a percent. You got to know how to get all three of them. Okay, and then number six, last one on the guided practice. We want to find the probability of not landing on red. So I do not want red to be included. Well, add up everything but the red. So 45 plus 90 plus 60 plus 45 over 360. If we add all of those up, we'll get 240 over 360. Let's see what that reduces to. Ah, two thirds. So this is two thirds. Again, you're more than welcome to stop here, but make sure you know that two thirds is 0.667 or 66.7%. Okay, so there's the guided practice. Now, for the ones you do on your own, the practice problems, the first three are just pure computation. Can you type them in the calculator? The next ones are kind of like what we've been doing. Uh, 13 through 15, look at your notes. 16 through 19, those are just pure probability. 20, we've done one like it yesterday. And then 21, 22, and 23. Again, look at your notes, look at your guided practice. So as far as our last assignment goes, that's it. Now all you have left is your review and your final or the unit nine test. So with that being said, congratulations. You have finished officially the last day of material for geometry. Congratulations, you did it. But don't celebrate too fast. First, you gotta get this handed in. So get to it. If you need my help, you know how to get to me.